Hey guys, Virtus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 beginner tutorial series. And in today's episode, we're going to be continuing on with working with save and load game information. So in the previous video, if you haven't seen it already, uh, we pretty much just made a basic little system to store the number of clicks that the player has done. And then that information is going to be stored persistently. So when you close the game, open it up again and stuff, we can actually access that and we can keep adding to it. Now, you'd use a system similar to this for things like player XP or level where you don't want it to end at the end of the match you know you want to store it persistently when they close the game open the game and so on so what I'm going to be doing today basically is taking our number of clicks save game system one step further and showing you how to display it on the user interface instead of just a print string. So by doing this we're going to be able to uh, see exactly how we can access the variable from other blueprint classes and then you know do uh, make changes to it or even just display it on the screen. So if you take a quick look at the top of my viewport you can see I've got number of clicks and then I've also got the number of clicks as well and each time I press the K button it goes up and up and up and up and you know you do this for stuff like uh, displaying the player XP player level or any other cool stuff like that it's entirely up to you you can do whatever you want with the system uh, there's loads of functionality you can do um, like I said also in the previous video you can use save and load game stuff to actually set the location of items in the level if you want to open it up or add checkpoints and all of that cool stuff. But for now let's just show you how to get these this save game information onto the screen. So what I'm going to do here is start off by setting up all the user interface stuff. Now if you haven't watched my previous videos on user interface and getting a HUD on the screen and stuff, I do advise that you check it out by clicking the thumbnails in the top left hand corner. Um, but for now I'm just going to quickly make a, uh, a quick speed setup of like the HUD and then just getting some text on there. And then we're going to show you how to create the binding, load the information from the slot and all of that cool stuff. So first things first, we need to create a new HUD class. So all I'm going to do is right click, new blueprint class, and I'm going to call this new, uh, actually now I've got to type in HUD to define the class that we want. Just go ahead and press HUD, press select. I'm going to name this new HUD class BP and then when I go over to my world settings if you don't know how to get over to that just go to window world settings I'm just going to make sure I change my HUD class to that so that we can actually display the new HUD information on the screen like the number of clicks or the player XP or anything like that so now I've done that let's go ahead and open up the new HUD class inside of this we need to do a few things First things first, we need to create the widget and display it on the screen. So begin play, I'm going to just hook that up to create widget. And I'm also going to add that to the viewport. So I'm going to hook that up to add to viewport. And then I'm just going to set the return value to target. Owning player is I'm going to get owning player controller. And then the class will do that in a second, but I'm going to compile and save that for now. You can see there's an error, that's just because I haven't defined a widget class yet. We're going to go ahead and create that. So right click in the content browser, go to blueprint class, and over here we need to type in user widget. Make sure you select the top one, press select. Um, you should be able to do this if you watch my previous episode, so I'm just going as quick as I can. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name this show cool value save game. Name it whatever you want, it doesn't really matter at this point. And with that selected, I'm going to go ahead and put this into the class, compile it, and that should be all good there. So, now that we open up our show you know, value stuff, or your HUD class, or your menu, whatever you're going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and chuck some text on there, just to make sure it is displayed on the screen. And I press play, and you can see I've got my text block here. Now what we want to do is create a binding for this so that it only displays the information uh, related to our save game and it's going to be completely dynamic as well. So to do that just go over to content, go to bind and then we need to create a binding. And inside of this binding it's essentially going to be a function that gets the return value or the value of our save game variable. So let's go ahead and do that. First things first though, I'm going to rename this function to 
get none of clicks. There we are, and I'm going to hook this up to load game, load game from slot. And we'll fill in the slot name in a second, but the next thing I'm going to do is cast to my save game. Try and use the same stuff that you we created in the last episode. So if you've got a save game file with a different name, make sure you set it to that instead. So cast to, if it was Vertus save game, you know, you cast to Vertus save game. Hook up the return value for load game from slot. And as my save game, this is where we can actually start referencing the variables. So from here, we need to get the ref get a reference to the variable for number of clicks. Get number of clicks, just like we created in the last video. And all we're going to do is hook this up to the return value here. It's going to convert the integer to text so it can be displayed in the screen and we're all good. Now one last thing that we need to do is we need to make sure we've got the slot name correct. So if we go over to our third person character or wherever we set up the functionality for our save game, we need to check the slot name. And so for here, it's slot name. So inside of here, I'm just going to make sure this is also slot name. I'm going to press compile and let's see what this does. So you can now see I've got my value on the screen, so 246. Each time I press the button, it goes up and up and up and up, and it works pretty well. Now, if you wanted to, you could proceed to go and style this a little bit, so you could make it bigger. So if I wanted to set this to something like 55, I can do. If I wanted to add another piece of text that says XP or number of clicks or anything, I can do that too. Number of clicks, there you go, hook that up, and boom. But that is pretty much everything that I wanted to go over for this uh, episode. I just wanted to show you how to get your save game information onto the screen and it should also give you a better understanding of how you can reference your save game information and do cool stuff with it. So thanks for watching, comment, like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.